it looks to people on the surface when they read the Sermon on the Mount that Jesus is meaner than Moses. Because <laughs> Moses gave him the Ten Commandments and said, thou shalt not murder, right? And what did Jesus say? Oh, no, it's not just not murdering somebody. Just being angry with them <laughs> is, is going to be a problem. <laughs> thou shalt not commit adultery. No, no, it's a little deeper than that. It's not just not committing the act of adultery. It's even lusting in your heart for that person. And every man in the room goes, forget it. I'm out of here. No, really, this is true. They think it means to be weak somehow and to lose your manhood. It's not what he was saying. All right? And I just listed a bunch of quick ones here. I don't want to dishonor the Sermon on the Mount, but just to give you a little quick theme, murder or anger, you have to live in the kingdom of God that allows you to control your anger because even if you didn't murder the person, you could have assassinated their character with your words. And that's just as bad in God's eyes because that's not from the motive of the kingdom. Or keep a pure heart before you give. And, you know, you know that part of Scripture where it says if you have an offering but you have aught in your heart, lay your offering down and go make right with that person before you bring the offering. That's a challenge, isn't it? That's not a religious thing because religious people say, no, I didn't kill him. I didn't sleep with her. We didn't have sex. And then you get Bill Clinton saying, uh, ba -ba -da -ha -ba -da -ha -ba -da -ba. it depends what you mean by the. <laughs> you know, like, I don't even know, remember what he said. But the spirit of the law is I want you to have Holy Spirit living on the inside of you. So I want you to behave in a holy way. And if I said that's a sin, avoid the thing and its cousins. <laughs> Right? Because lust is a cousin of actual adultery. Most people commit spiritual adultery before they commit the act of adultery. They live with that fantasy for a while, and they flirt with each other for a while, and there's all this game that goes on. Although today it's so bad that they have apps that you could just find somebody and probably don't even have to know their name. Man, it's really a, a sick world. It's always been a sick world. We've got the answer. Religion locks us down because we already think we know what the answer is, so we don't bother engaging with it and saying, Lord, I don't want to be that old wineskin where you're trying to pour the new wine in, but I've already expanded as far as I'm willing to go. He's saying, no, I want you to be the new wineskin. And it's a daily process. So give me today tomorrow's bread. I want to pull down from heaven. My current status is not going to be good enough. What got me here, you know the rest? is not going to get me here. <laughs> That's a big one. When you start a church, right, you're, you're wearing all these different hats, and then you have to learn how to let go and delegate to people. I don't know that I've done such a great job on that, but you're all here, so I'm happy about that. But, you know, the thing that got us there wasn't going to get us to where we wanted to go, so who had to change? Moi. <laughs> And then he says, settle disputes before you get to the courtroom and adultery versus lusting. And you could go through this rest of this chapter. How about love your enemies? That yeah, was a foreign concept to them. So it looked like Jesus was putting a harder rule, uh, rule book down for them. And he was saying, no, it's not a harder rule book. You're looking in the natural at your behavior. I'm looking at your heart. So just the fact that you didn't murder somebody is not good enough. That's not a very high standard. Were you kind to them? Did you believe the best about them? No, I talked bad about them. I gossiped about them because they did something bad back to me. No, no, look, that's not the kingdom. That's toxic religion. And it could be in any field, not just in church. All right, I think you're tracking, so I'm going to go a little further. So here, I'll, I'll compare this to be the worldly kingdom and this to be God's kingdom. So when we're in God's kingdom, what does the first one say? We're focused on the inner condition. But what religion does is look at what? The outer condition. Now, you remember this is in the Bible, too, when Samuel was supposed to bless one of Jesse's sons. And, and Samuel said, God, this must be the one. And what did God say? You look at the outside. I look at the heart. And David had really no credentials. And a lot of people think he was... Uh, not uh, of equal, he wasn't, the, he didn't have the same mother as the rest of the sons, that he was an illegitimate child. And that's why he wasn't even called to be with the other brothers. Now, I haven't researched it enough, but I've heard a lot of people that I really respect 
say that's legitimate. It might be that way. And that, uh, that Jesse didn't even think to call David because he didn't consider him a full son. And yet, wouldn't it be just like God to pick that one? Because he saw his heart. It wasn't based on the outer condition. It was based on the inner condition of his heart. The next one is, this side in the kingdom is based on relationship. This one is about rules and regulations. And religion is really good at rules and regulations. And our culture is really good at rules and regulations and shaming us if we don't measure up. Now, a good father and a good mother, they have to confront things, but they don't shame you. When they're confronting something that wasn't done right, they don't say that you're bad. They say that the behavior you did was bad. That's a big difference, isn't it? But the world, man, they're just black belts at shaming us when we don't measure up. So you don't have to buy into the world system. That's the beauty of all this. He has a better way. But moving from there to here requires us to strip off some stuff and say, you know, I'm not going to hold on to that thing because I don't want to be that wineskin that has already expanded as far as it can go. I'm going to be a fresh new wineskin every day so you can pour your new wine in. It doesn't mean I let go of everything I already knew, but I build on what I learned yesterday so that I can be a better person that he wants me to be, the one that he's asking me to be transformed into his image every day. I think it's an everyday thing. And then we have authentic over here, kingdom, versus the imitation. Imitation is really uh, one of those words that, that goes with religion. You, you can relate, right? And again, not just in the church, but I remember hearing John Wimber, who I related to because he was a very successful musician before he became a Christian. And when he got brought into one of these churches from, by his friend, when they, when they got time to do the announcement, the guy said, now let's turn to our Bibles. And John looked at his friend and said, well, what's wrong with his voice, <laughs> right? Because this guy felt like he had to put this imitation brand on himself in order to sound holy. And, and God's sitting here saying, no, I love you for who you are. And, and that doesn't make you any holier changing your voice. You can be authentic with me. You don't have to try to imitate some image of what you think is religious or, or holy. You could just be yourself. Wow, that's a new thing to a lot of people. Because if I've been shamed into having to behave a certain way, I can't really think I can be honest because if I admit I'm dealing with a problem, I may get demoted and then I'm, I'm going to lose my status. But so much of my identity is tied up in my status that I better not say anything. I better just struggle in silence. No, not in church. If you can't be honest in church, where are you going to be honest? He's the spirit of truth. <laughs> Thou shall not lie. If you're having a problem, we should be the first ones you want to talk to and say, hey, I need prayer. It's not any shameful thing. Might you want to take a break from ministry? Yeah, you might. That's not the end of the world. You didn't discredit the ministry. Where would I come up with a phrase like that? Hmm. And then humble in the kingdom. You know, there's a lot we could say about humility, but it's that posture of, you know, like surrender to the Lord. And you meet somebody who's younger than you, who doesn't seem to have the same level of maturity or confidence, and yet they can give you a word that helps you grow if you're open to it. But if you shut it off and say, oh, no, I can never receive from that person, that's a toxic religious attitude. See, God, like Lisa said, I heard a teacher say, not only did God speak through a donkey, he was still a donkey after God spoke through him. <laughs> you get it? Like, you know, it doesn't mean the person automatically becomes this road scholar because they had an accurate prophetic word. They still got stuff they got to deal with, right? But, but if God could use that person, then who the heck are you to not be humble enough to say he could use Daniel Kaznowski? How old is he now? 11 years old. And don't be surprised if Daniel has an accurate word for you. He's 11. Oh, no, I could never receive. Come on. What are you kidding? Like, who are you? But for the grace of God. And then this word is really kind of at the heart of what this toxic religion does. You have heard the word sanctimonious? See how it imitates sanctified? Because it's right in there. It's the same root. It's sanctified, but there's ammonious on it. <laughs> we got to get rid of the monious because there's some kind of ceremonial thing. See? 
And look at the definition. Making a show of being morally superior. You're not supposed to make a show. You're supposed to show up. It's different. We don't have to put on these airs. And that's what the Pharisees did. And they were the main ones that had this toxic religious spirit, which is a problem because Jesus wanted to use the Pharisees, but they were locked down. They didn't want to be born again. They couldn't see the kingdom of God, and they couldn't enter it because they couldn't see it. Big difference. It's not heaven when you die. It's this accessible kingdom. He's a very present help in a time of trouble. The kingdom is accessible, but to walk through it, you've got to let go of that old wineskin that's already been expanded as far as it can go. No, Lord, today. Give me today the room to grow into tomorrow of who you want me to be.